friends and welcome or welcome back to another video. I have missed you so much. I have missed making videos, I have missed making costumes. There were a lot of things going on in the past few months that were very important to me. I had to make priorities and focus on things that had to be done. So I have put my channel on pause just for a few months to, you know, get things straight and everything is safe now and everything is all right. I am going to talk about it at the end of the video just because I don't want to, you know, bombard you with all these informations that are really unnecessary for the topic of this video. If you're interested, just stick around and stay until the end, then you will get a little update. The jacket I am going to show you today was actually my sample piece for a job interview. And I will call it a job interview over here just because it is actually an educational program specific to Germany. And I don't think that everyone knows about this type of educational programs. Just really quick, you have a working part at a company and the school part is automatically included. So it's the combination of these two. And you have to apply to a company to get the working part and they will send you to a school. So this is why I will call it a job interview. In Germany, this kind of educational program is actually called Ausbildung. But even more interesting is the fact that the jacket I am going to talk about today is actually an original pattern from the Broadway by the costume designer Paul Teswell. Since the thing you shall not name started last year, especially the theater and entertainment industry was hit hard and they struggle financially until this day. So in May 2020, the Costume Industry Coalition was born and I quote, it consists of 50 small unique independent businesses and artisans in and around New York City that supply costumes for the entertainment industry. So to gather financial resources, the pattern was made publicly available over on Etsy and if you buy it, all the money is going toward this costume industry coalition so that these little businesses have at least a little bit of financial support. If you want to know more about them, just check out their website. I have linked it down below in my description box. They explain everything they do and also check out Bernadette Benner's video who also made the jacket and also talks in depth about the work at the Broadway. I have to say it was very interesting to get those inside that you would normally not get. Just so you know, this was actually my first historical garment that I made, these Regency stays. And it was a nice coincidence that this pattern was also a Regency inspired garment. So I'm slowly building my complete costume. But now let's get into the making of the jacket. As per usual, I started with cutting out and assembling the pattern pieces. In the beginning, there were some uncertainties, but I can assure you it wasn't actually that tricky looking back. Here are all the pieces I have just cut out, but I have to admit I am a little bit confused with a few of them. Here's the center front and I am not entirely sure how this is going to work. I mean, I these are probably darts, but I don't know what this line is. It was connected to this line of the dart. Um, maybe it's going to be, I don't know, it's an extension of the dart, but here's also, it's saying interfacing line and here it's the same with the side front lining. I am so confused. I don't know. And I also don't know what this is. This is going to be exactly here in the front. It's the front something. Or maybe it's going to be underneath. This may be the case. Oh yeah, so maybe that's the collar part. This is going to be like flipped or something. Oh well, I don't know. I'm... I'm really confused. <laughs> I started with a very simple mock-up just to see if the size was right and to get to know the pattern a little bit because back then this was one of the most complex garments I have made so far. Okay, so this part, like the front is totally okay. I am very happy about this. The only thing is the back. First of all, there is too much room. We have to take away some fabric here. And also, I am not entirely sure what do you think about the sleeve situation here because this is 
obviously too much fabric going on here but on the other side when I put my arm in the front there's enough room to, for me to move freely and comfortable but when I put it like this in my opinion but I'm not professional there's too much uh, fabric going on here but in terms of the look and of the optical aspect I'm not worrying because there's going to be a puff sleeve over it but in terms of this is going to be my sample piece for my job interview I am a little bit worried that they will actually see this because you know they are seamstresses and sewists and uh, bespoke tailors and stuff like this so um, they will probably see this, but on the other side, maybe not if they aren't looking inside of it. I don't know if I don't have to try it on. So I think I will just let it be because, you know, it's the pattern. But so far, I'm pretty happy. I mean, it's quite short, but there's also going to be a band beneath it. Anyways, I think I will change only the seam here and I'm good to go. And I can also already see that this is going to be a good fit. It's the next day and I'm going to quickly show you my progress for today. I have been sewing and working on this jacket for I think nine hours straight today so uh, I'm done for today like I'm not doing anything else. Here are the different lining and interfacing things that are being applied for this jacket and most of the things have a flat lining so because there are so many like three of them I color coded them and here in the instructions I have color coded as well like everywhere where I have to pay attention to the lining or the interfacing it's um color coded so it's easier for me not to overlook something so as i said most of the things have a flat lining and for the flat lining i just used the pieces i have already cut out for the mock-up i have seen so Steen making this uh, in her video so i thought i might as well do this like her so it doesn't go to waste and also i feel like this is a good combination between the two types of fabric here. I don't know which ones they are, but they feel nice. So the only pieces that don't have a flat lining are the collar and this part, which is, I think, the inner lining for the front center piece. But I'm not entirely sure what this is, actually. And here comes the fun part. Those are going to be those petals for the shoulders three on each side so I have a six in total and every one of them has a flat lining and also a lining of the same fabric as the outer layer so I had to cut 12 in total and I already made the darts in one go so all three of them have a different shape so I had to really pay attention to where I put my flat lining in and how I make the darts. <laughs> so this was a bit hectic, but I think I made everything right. All in all, I think it was a pretty successful day. It looks like way less work than it actually was, but I am I'm pretty happy with the results. Tomorrow I think I will start sewing everything together and preparing the bias type. After working on the big parts, I decided to start preparing the little details like the little cotton balls, the pom-poms that are all around the jacket and also a lot, a lot, a lot of bias tape. For the little pom-poms, I cut out 35 by 5 cm squares out of scraps of the outer fabric. I use a 20 cents coin to mark the stitching line and a friction pen which gets invisible when heat is applied. At first, I cut many little fabric pieces for the filling, but at some point, I just rolled together bigger pieces of fabric to the desired size and it turned out just exactly the same. Now watching over the footage, I feel like they turned out like little tiny ghosts. Oh my god, they're so cute. For the rest of the decorative parts, I needed a lot of pressed and stretched bias tape. To be honest, before that I didn't even know about the act of pressing and stretching bias tape, so I have learned a lot during this project. First thing I made with the bias tape was the rouleau trim. I actually had to look it up how others made it, because I didn't really understand the instructions at first. I had to cut out some 5cm wide bias tape in a cord double D length. The center of the cord had to be secured at one edge of the bias tape, 
The tape had to be folded over and sewn together lengthwise. Then I had to cut the seam allowance down and flip the bias tape tunnel over onto the other half of the cord, which was always a little bit tricky in the beginning. I also had cut down the seam allowance a little bit too much at some point, so I had to go back and close the openings by hand. For the bands of the sleeve decorations, I basically had to do the same thing and just pull the cord all the way out instead of cutting the excess off and press them flat afterwards. Another usage of the bias tape were the petals on the sleeve puffs. To prepare them, I folded them over lengthwise and sewed them 1.5 cm wide together. No turning outwards here. I worked on and off on the pedals but stopped at some point because I recognized that I wouldn't be able to finish them in time for my job interview and focused on the more important parts instead. That being said, I also didn't do the sleeve decorations up until after the interview for time reasons and to be honest. Both of them were my least favorite part, um, so that's why it took me so long to finish this video. A task that also took me a while was the application of the leaf motifs on the front of the jacket with the rouleau trim, because I haven't done anything like this before, but it was fun. I also had to learn how to use a grommet really quick, because at this point my fingers couldn't take any more pressure from a needle. I have watched a few videos of this process from others before starting it myself just to see if there was a certain way that would make it easy and I found that the way I did it um, was actually pretty good, like it worked really well for me, so I would suggest to try it. First I secured the rouleau trim in the right position with big stitches around it on the top and then in the second step I stitched it down properly from underneath the rouleau with a lot smaller stitches. At the end I just removed the thread on top et voila, there you have a neat and tidy application of the leaf motif. This way I could really work out the edges and curves of the pattern. One of the most exciting parts were all the different layers of the jacket and also the tailoring techniques that I haven't used before. For the collar I needed some sturdy inner facing. I reckon many people using horsehair fabric, but I didn't have any so I had to improvise. My most sturdy fabric was this one, I don't really know what it was, and I chose the lightest part so the pattern wouldn't be visible from the outside of the collar. I cut out a piece the same size as my collar, marked the seam allowances and quilted it to the flat lining fabric. Then I cut away the seam allowance to reduce bulk and flat line to the inside of the collar face. Finally I attached a double cord on the outer edge and cut its seam allowance so it would lay nicely. Unfortunately I cut the edge of the double cord a little bit too short on the right side and it is visible on the final piece so be aware of that. Next, I started to work on the body of the jacket. From a light cotton fabric, I cut out the interfacing. Remember the strange part that I was confused about? Here it is. I marked all seam allowances on the label slash color edge and started to pin some tailor's tape along the line. I was especially satisfied with how neat the 90 degrees inner corner turned out. Then I whip stitched the tape down and added all the other seam allowances except for the inner edge just because there is none. edge I marked a 0.6 cm seam allowance and cut it down to prevent bulk at the armhole seam. I pinned it down into the fabric and as you can see there is some loose fabric at the interfacing because this area is going to be curved outwards. From the outside, which would be the inside of the label later, I slip stitched along the future fold. Then the real fun began. 
I had to form the label so that it would stand up later. So while making diagonal stitches, I already bent the fabric to its soon to be form, especially right at the label fold. In the end, it looked like this and I have to say it was very satisfying. The final task to the interfacing was stitching its seam allowance to the shoulder seam and the hem at the bottom. Unfortunately, I don't have any footage of the application of the belt, like the band at the bottom of the jacket, but I feel like it's quite self-explanatory, so yeah. Then the double cord came to action again. In the instructions, there was a different approach to its attachment, but I had to work it that way due to another step I did differently. Weeks later, I don't really remember what it was anymore. But it worked out and that's what's important in the end, right? I based it onto the seam allowance all around the jacket the same way as on the collar and sewed it on with the sewing machine. It was a little bit tricky at the corner, so I went back and redid it by hand there. Now it was the sleeve's turn. I shared the top sleeves as well as the sleeve puffs at the shoulder part to 13 cm and sewed the top sleeve to the bottom sleeve part. Next, I marked the hemline and basted the double cord to it. One of my favorite details is the double cord at the sleeves and at the sleeve puffs hems, because the edges are tucked away on the inside and this just adds a nice looking finish to it. For the inner lining of the spencer, I used some white synthetic silk kind of fabric. I needed to line the bodice and the sleeves, but for the lining of the lapel, I used the pink fabric because it will stick out. You will see later what I mean. After cutting everything out and sewing the sleeves together, I pressed the hem and the seam allowances to the inside. In my case, I attached the lining on the sleeves before decorating them because I had to go to my interview very soon and wanted to bring a complete piece of clothing. Later, when I did the decorations, I removed the seam at the wrist and attached it again afterwards. That just made everything easier to handle. At the shoulder puffs, only the band has an extra lining, which I also slip stitched to the hem, as well as to the facing of the puff. I really really like how clean and neat the finish is on the inside. When attaching the sleeve puffs to the actual sleeve of the shoulder part, I had to pay attention to not include the lining. It had to stay loose until sewn by hand to the bodice later. After that, I sewed the sleeves to the bodice again without including any of the lining. Next, I attached the lining to the belt by slip stitching it to the double cord and leaving the upper edge loose. This is the current state of the jacket. They're still missing the leaves on the sleeve puffs and also the decorations on the sleeves themselves but this is the progress I made until my training interview I would say at the theater and I took it with me and told that this is my current project I'm working on. I have almost completely done the lining. I have to attach the uh, sleeve lining to the bodice lining. This is the only thing, but I wasn't sure how to make it. And they kindly explained me how to do it properly. So this is what I'm going to do today. And one thing I also noticed was it seems like the inner facing is smaller or shorter than the facing. So that's why it's 
looking a little bit strange over here. I want to open up the seam between the belt lining and the bodice lining and use a little bit more of the seam allowance to even this out because it feels like it's quite bulky on the outer layer. So as you can hopefully see, there is no bulk or like wrinkles around this area, like the back is a lot more flat. And this is the inside. As you can see, there was the previous stitching line and it's approximately one centimeter down. It's still a lot of seam allowance in there, so it's okay. I don't think this is going to be a big problem. I just have to iron it down so it won't be visible. And now I can show you what I did with the sleeves. I'm going to open them up again because this is not how it should be. I just quickly closed it up for my job interview. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the wrong way. I'm going to open them up and I'm also going to add the decorations on the sleeves and on this side I just basted it like lightly and once the sleeves are done I'm going to attach the petals on the sleeve puffs here and then I'm done yeah first I marked all the important points for the lattice motif then began stitching it down from beneath the band I found it to be the best way to stitch the band to the sleeve from underneath and make a few extra stitches at the edges and the corners You also have to pay attention to the way you lay down the band because it's actually getting attached to every second dot on each side on the way up and to all the dots left in between on the way down. It can be very tricky in the beginning, so really pay attention to it. On the top I added three little cotton balls, the same as in the front at the leaf motifs. Originally there should have been also a little ball on the top, but I was so done with all the decorations that I just skipped the step. Finally, I attached the sleeve lining to the armhole seam first, and then I sewed the bodice lining to the sleeve lining. At the theater they told me that this was the most dirty way to attach the lining of a jacket because there's more tugging and force applied to the sleeve and so the sleeve lining than to the bodice and the bodice lining. So it's safer to attach the sleeve lining to the bodice and then the bodice lining to the sleeve lining. In both cases I did it by hand and used a back stitch for the sleeve and a slip stitch for the bodice. I also made little cuts to the seam allowances to make the lining more adjustable to the armhole. Looking back, it was a really nice project that I enjoyed doing 99% of the time. There were a lot of steps and new techniques to it, which I love to learn. I also think that at some point I will make another Spencer jacket with this pattern, just with a few adjustments, for example, the labels and the color, and also with maybe different decorations or motifs. So we'll see. I just really enjoyed making such a jacket and using all the different tailoring techniques that I haven't before. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. If you want to stick around for the next few minutes, just do it. I will talk a little bit about all the stuff that happened in the past few months and talk about what is coming in the future, uh, mostly regarding my career and education. But if not, it's totally fine. I understand. 
Anyways, thank you for watching and uh, sticking around so far. So if you feel like enjoying more of my content in the future, subscribe. And if you click the notification bell, you will be notified when the video comes up. I would be really, really happy if you could give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down and also maybe a constructive comment because, uh, you know, then I can improve and work on my videos and my weaknesses and my strengths. This would be really nice. I would really appreciate this. Otherwise, I guess I will see you in the next video. For those of you who are staying, this is not scripted, so it may sound a little bit like rambling. So just to uh, get this clear, I didn't got accepted at a theater. I actually applied to every theater with an open spot for this educational program in Germany. Like, I would have moved for this education. But none of them invited me because I feel like because of my past career path, I mean, I was always science focused. They maybe thought that that's a little bit weird that she just decided to change her path and make something creative and crafty. I think that made a lot of people insecure. And I was invited to one, like only one. And I was there, everything went all right. The interview was really, really nice. I talked to a lot of people and they were all really, really kind. I also showed my assemble piece, of course, and the costume designer was very impressed by my skills and my motivation to make such a thing. And they told me, okay, hey, we have a few more participants. We will call you in a few days back just to update you on our decision. And when they called, they told me that before me, there were two other girls that I would prefer. And I would have had the option to start my education if they would have said, no, we don't want to, like we found another place or whatever. So then it would have been my turn, but also just don't see this happening for me. I am, I am done with this. After they told me that I was accepted I was a little bit devastated because I was so focused on finding an educational program for me to become a bespoke tailor specific to costumes and such things that I wasn't really looking left and right like I had a plan B but I wasn't really acting on it I was so certain and so sure that I would get in a friend of mine who works at this theater industry she told me yeah you are so skilled like you are so interested in those things that you'll definitely get the spot and I didn't so uh, then I had to really quickly adapt to the new situation and find something that I could start instead of this my plan b was actually going to the software development computing science direction because I have some experience in this field while studying chemistry we also had some subjects regarding this topic and I have also programmed a few things already so I was like okay it's it's a pretty nice job I really like that I have to get my brain working and um, it's a pretty secure option for me because this career field is really looking for people and they are offering really really nice educational programs just for comparison I found more spots for the IT educational program in Cologne alone than for the theater for the bespoke tailoring educational program in whole Germany so you know there are a lot more bots open and a lot more programs available I had a lot more interviews like I think I had five or so so at some interview I was talking to two people from a company and they were like okay what would happen if we told you that you can start working at our company in August we are inviting you now and uh, would you accept our offer? And I was like, hell yes, I am. Because I was really, really vibing with them and they were so kind and so nice. It seemed like a really, really good company for me. They were one of my favorites. So at this point I was like, hell yes, I am, I'm starting working with you at your company. Just send me all the documents. I will put in my signature and the deal is, is done. It seems like in August I'm starting my Ausbildung as a software developer, which is also really nice. And time has passed since my job interview at a theater and I'm content with how things turned out because the reason why they didn't offer me a job was because apparently apparently the people i have worked there with like for the afternoon of course they were there to test me to you know look at me and see if i would fit into the team and i was i was talking to the costume designer there who was really impressed by my sample piece 
and she told me that apparently I was too eager and too motivated for the people I was working with there for the afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry for the lighting. Okay, well... I am a little bit overexposed, but it's okay, I am done soon. So apparently the, the people there, the workers there told that I was too eager, I was too motivated, and the costume designer, when I, when I talked to her, she said that they might be afraid that I wanted to know too much and I would ask a lot of questions and, and that I would want to evolve fast and uh, work a lot. And the job at a theater is really secure. Like the theaters are paid by the government because they are they are paid by the town and the town is paid by the government so their income is secure and people working there don't have to work off their asses if they don't want to. In comparison to the open economy, people who have their own ateliers like bespoke tailoring ateliers and things like that, they they really have to get their customers, they have to get people to buy from them and to really work to get their income so they are more interested in people like me who want to work off their asses but currently they can't afford to have someone for this educational program at their private atelier so there were no spots open the only opportunity for me to become a bespoke tailor was at the theater and for the theater i was too eager too motivated yeah just too much that's why i am also thinking that maybe i wouldn't have been happy at the theater because like if people wouldn't answer my questions and if i would have been slowed down all the time and maybe it's even good that sewing and tailoring and historical garments are staying my hobby maybe it's a good thing to have a hobby I am passionate about. I don't know, maybe it, it has to be this way and it turned out just perfectly fine. I don't know, we'll see. Anyways, I will continue making videos about historical garments on here, but if you're interested in seeing what I do work-wise and what I do in my, let's say, private life outside of sewing and YouTube, just comment below and maybe I will consider making a day in my life or how I combine those two things which are very very different. Just ask me questions if you want to, if you're interested in this. If you have been sticking around, you are the real ones. <laughs> Thank you so much and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye!